Welcome to part 20 of my Western Roman Empire campaign. The crisis of the 7th century is over. Through the victories of Titus I and the subsequent success of Titus II, the empire is now united again. However, the empire is financially weakened by the war, and how stable it actually is remains to be seen. And so welcome to Crusader Kings 3, The Fallen Eagle. The empire is now united again, but a small part of the only crisis still remains. The kingdom of Asioth is the last remnant of the former kingdom of Gethia, which had gained its freedom during the reign of Victorious. Titus did not hesitate and immediately began the reconquest of the only Roman territory. Besides the war, Roman culture has spread greatly and was now to be found in Italy, Gaul, Greece and even Britannia and Germania. Kind of funny because Britannia was actually the part of the real Roman Empire that never really became Roman. A <laughs> <laughs> second region in Egypt, right? Yeah, nice. <laughs> Perfect. Just took like 200 years, but okay. Octavianism was now dominant almost everywhere in the empire, especially in Persia and Central Africa. Titus had also set out to turn the Grecian culture, which was dominant in the East, into a Roman one. Something that was considered impossible by many. Nothing much happened over the next few years and Titus ensured that the Empire's treasury was slowly but surely replenished. Meanwhile, other factions in the North began to expand and many there hoped for a united Scandinavia strong enough to counter the Roman superiority. Titus' response to these rumors for the north was a large-scale invasion of the neighboring tribes to show that Rome had nothing to fear. But during the wars in Germania, a peasant revolt broke out in Spain and some other provinces, as many there still wished for the old faith to return. In general, Spain had to struggle the most with uprisings and civil wars. Bit by bit, I fought my way through the wars in Germania and the peasant uprising. But for the first time in a long time, I did not have to hire mercenaries to defend the empire. This was the best proof that the crisis was over and Rome was now moving towards a better time. Through his many successes, Titus had gained a lot of respect in Rome. In the next few years, some smaller conquests followed in Africa, but otherwise it was peaceful in the Roman Empire and also the plundering of Germanic tribes had subsided. The development in the west of the empire surpassed all other parts of the world and presented proudly the progress of Roman culture. Is there still something with zero, yeah, zero over here? <laughs> zero development, oh man. Titus had managed to give the people new hope after the crisis of the 7th century <sighs> Too soon. With Titus' death on the 25th October 736 AD, a part of the stability in the empire also disappeared, because Sicilius was crowned the new emperor. However, he was not yet of age, and thus the first emperor since Octavius to ascend the throne before reaching his majority. Therefore, my biggest task now was to keep the empire stable and to prevent uprisings which worked surprisingly well and for the next 10 years there was peace in the empire except for a smaller border conflict with Germania. I mean, where else if not there? In the meantime, Sicilius had become an adult, which made the administration of the empire much easier. He had also strengthened the Theodosian bloodline. Furthermore, he took care of the expansion of the infrastructure in the northern provinces. The people gave Celsius credit for the period of peace but he also wanted to prove himself on the battlefield and so he launched an invasion on the remaining West African tribes which had no chance against the Roman superiority. But once again the war caused the peasant rebellion to break out. But Celsius was able to end the wars in Africa before the peasant revolt broke out. So it was no longer a major threat. <laughs> After the uprising I continued to focus on the expansion and administration of the empire. Getting some parts of Fran France, Fran France, 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 oh my god, I don't know how to pronounce France. <laughs> ah. 
You know what I mean. In the meantime, there was another peasant uprising, but it was defeated without any problems. The desire for a Roman Africa grew ever greater in Sicilius, and so he called for another war to bring the last three African tribes under Roman control. The war was gone quickly and without any problems, thanks to the strength of the Roman armies. The only problem was the cost of the armies, because since the crisis of the 7th century, the empire could no longer build on its former financial prosperity. And if a war went longer than expected, it could have serious consequences for the empire. But right now, the empire was stable, with only occasional peasant uprisings requiring my attention from time to time. And over time, Octavianism had spread throughout the empire. Only the upper African provinces were reluctant to adopt the faith. In the meantime, Sicilius was getting closer to his goal of a Roman Africa, for not much was missing until Africa would be under complete Roman control. But India was not to be spared either, and so Sicilius launched an invasion of Indian territory after the African war. In Sicilius' opinion, the whole world was to be run by Rome. However, this was his last great quotation, for he died of obesity only a short time later. But his wish for a Roman world domination lived on through his son and the Roman people.